This show is brought to you by our patrons at patreon.com slash Elder Scrolls Lorecast. Robots Radio presents... Welcome to the Elder Scrolls Lorecast, a place where the Elder Scrolls community can come together to discuss the boundaries of our knowledge about the universe of the Elder Scrolls. Welcome to the Elder Scrolls Lorecast, everybody. This is the hundredth episode, hundred episodes of the Elder Scrolls Lorecast, and man, has time flown. Um, I was, <laughs> I've actually been moving some stuff over for the hosting, uh, and Lotus is here with me. I'm Tom, or Robots as usual. Lotus of Doom is here. Lotus, how's it going? Things are well. Things are well. Hello. Hello. Good, good. Um, so I, I, as I'm saying, I'm, I was moving things over. I'm kind of shifting hosting on the podcast and stuff and looking through the old podcast. And it was like, man, here's what here's the first time Lotus joined me on like episode eight or something like that. And I was like, it was really early. It was really early. And I was like, oh, my God, it's it's been that long since oh, the first time you joined me on the show. Um, but right. here we are. We are live right now. Twitch.tv slash robots radio. It is Thursday night at 10 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Pacific. And I have have some special guests with us we have um, lotus's other co-host from the other show that he does tales of tamriel um hyper pixie sometimes <laughs> <laughs> sometimes you don't name uh, hyper pixie is here with with a raid from her her stream today thank you for that hyper pixie how are you no problem i'm doing great happy to be here uh, you might hear sniffles and coughs and i'm sorry about your editing Oh, that's fine. I don't edit stuff anymore. It's just, it's just, okay. it's just whatever happens at this point. I'm, I'm kidding. Sometimes mm-hmm. I do edit things, but, I, uh, <laughs> but I hope you're feeling I'm sorry all right. To listeners. Oh, I'm fine. It's just left. cold. Okay. <laughs> well, that's good. That's good. And then I also have another guest, one of my other favorite Elder Scrolls on online streamers, T the Khajiit. T, welcome to the show. Hello. Thank you for inviting me. You're welcome. I'm glad you decided to join us. I, I should have done this earlier. I haven't. I've been really kind of slacking on the whole going around inviting people to, to jump on the show thing uh, with so many things going on lately. But um, I'm glad you can make it. How are you? How are things? Things are good. Good. Getting excited for a patch and also spooky pumpkin stuff. Yes, spooky the pumpkin, pumpkin stuff. Emote is back, by the way, everyone. So go, yes, it's it's go spooky it. time. It's spooky time. Go get all the stuff. Do the witches stuff. Up, level your characters. Do all sorts of do the fun things. Be spooky. It's time for that in Elder Scrolls Online. So if you haven't um, jumped in this time of year, you should probably do that because it's it's a fun time to be uh, playing the game. It's a fun event. Um, so today we will be discussing some of our just favorite things about Elder Scrolls lore. This is this is what I want to do to celebrate our hundredth episode. Usually, you guys know how it goes. We do a specific topic for the week. We kind of dig into a lore topic, and Lotus and I dissect it, and we kind of you know bounce some ideas back and forth. But this week, I just want to hear about some of your favorite bits of lore. And and this can be anything at all, guys. This can be like, uh, I love this little bit of a story that happened in this game in this one little thing. Or I really love this character. Or I really love the general concept of the way the lore works or the stories work or whatever in Elder Scrolls. As opposed to, say, other games or other stories because of this reason. So it can be as broad or as specific as as you want um but i'd love to kick this off with one of our guests would either of you like to to go first anyone want to volunteer anybody i can go ahead and go okay i can volunteer okay so yeah so what do you what do you think when it comes to the lore what's one of the things that you really stands out to you about the elder scrolls so something that i love and we we actually lotus has heard me talk about this quite a bit and We've heard me and Ark argue about the races of Tamriel. Uh (laughs) So without getting into like alliance wars or anything like that, the the thing that I love are the shades of gray throughout all of the lore of the Elder Scrolls. There's no one bad guy. Like it might be, oh, elves are bad. Elves are evil. But what about the Nords? They have the gray quarter. They're also pretty racist. And Mm -hmm. what about the way the orcs were treated and all of this stuff throughout all of the races? They are all kind of bad. 
right the yeah, nobody's without their flaws good, <laughs> right yeah <laughs> that's true everybody kind of you know steps on the argonians and so they're kind of just if ever they do anything bad they're kind, it's kind of warranted <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> that much abuse they get kind of a justification pass a little bit and it's like well that's kind of payback <laughs> like, right, right. <laughs> yeah i i I agree with this this concept, this idea that um, it is interesting that everybody is that nobody's without their their own sins in a way that uh, things are gray. Everybody is. I mean, from I mean, not everyone's not human in this world, but they are people. Right. They are. They are flawed. And for every good heroic thing that you can find in any specific race or community or whatever, you can also find the flip side. You can find the, you know, the, the lack of that or the complete antithesis of that. So that's a really interesting point. I like that. And that's definitely my favorite because I feel like that's actually a, a really good way to tell stories in general. You don't just want the classic kids fairy tale of this is bad and this is good. So it definitely makes it feel like more of an adult series and more immersive, too, because it does mirror real life because the, the world is shades of gray. And I just absolutely love it. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Go ahead, Lotus. I've got some thoughts too, say, but go ahead. To, yeah, to that point, just like um, even going through, as I've seen from some of the older games, like some of the races that um, originally, or, you know, beyond even races, some of the creatures in the series started as just kind of like, oh, we need a filler enemy. And then as the series has gone on, orcs have become like a full culture. Um, you know, Argonians became fleshed out into what they are in ESO, which is like really, really elaborate now. And uh, they, they, I mean, even simple things like the dragons are super elaborate. And then their backstory, it's like they all have hierarchies. They have their languages, like the, everything's so in depth as opposed to just this thing is bad with the possible exception of Molag Ball. That's pretty yeah. much the only thing yeah. I can think of. It's like, you know what really sucks Molag Ball? But other than that... I was going to mention that when she started going into the whole Shades of Grey thing. I was like, well... Or, or yeah, even, I, I or even like... There's very one. few. Yeah, or like Manny Marco. Like, does he have any redeemable qualities? <laughs> yeah. Mm. It's rare. It's rare that there's not. <laughs> but as in general, though, if we think of it as a whole then yeah it's, it's mostly shades of gray except for those the guys yeah. princes might be an exception to that right <laughs> yeah, yeah. As far as all about good. Races no. specifically. Oh, now yeah. you guys are trying <laughs> holes in my thing already <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it, it's it's interesting to talk about, though, because for the most part, things are gray, right? Are there any things uh, and th there are clearly things that are absolutely black. You know, I mean, you could you could even say something like the concept of Sithis, whether that's real or imagined. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, there's lots of debate about what that actually means. But like, sure. yeah, OK, Sithis kind of represents the void and nothingness and <laughs> the destruction of that. And <laughs> and um so you know there's that but is there is there a flip side can you guys think of anything that falls very squarely in the good like the light the the almost always positive when it comes to hmm. to this like there isn't anything that comes to mind for me that's particularly always good uh, even the Adric spirits are right busy most of the time and not answering <laughs> prayers or helping um, yeah the divines don't care <laughs> yeah they, they kind of i mean and they're kind of limited in some understandings as to you know what they can contribute because they've already contributed so much to just the world existing um so right. there's that whole thing um there are individuals who who stand up for things that are right i guess and I mean, obviously, the characters you play as uh, can do whatever you decide to do. So, I mean, there's that. But, I mean, can you, like, somebody like, I don't know, uh, just thinking through the characters. Is there anybody that really stands up as just, like, a really good person all the time? Queen Irene. She's pretty cool. I like her. But yeah. I'm not supposed to say that right now. So I was going to say, you don't get <laughs> I have been forced by charity to... <laughs> quickly denounce her but i couldn't just not say it because i i really just can't think of something that everything she does like she's trying to do the right thing like you can disagree with the dominion but just her as a person like she's sure. standing for equality and stuff so she's trying to do the right thing does she do it the right way maybe not all the time but she's doing her best at least 
Okay, so I I think, I mean, I guess this is going to be a real stretch to try to go with. He doesn't do anything. <laughs> so if you look at it from game perspective, the mud crab merchant from Morrowind, <laughs> he provides <laughs> us unlimited <laughs> funds each day, uh-huh. and he doesn't do anything this. except get drunk. <laughs> Okay, that's, that's. I mean, I mean, I was just gonna say guars. <laughs> just guars. Guars are just adorable, <laughs> and I completely support you. T it's on a good that, thing. So. It's a good thing Ark isn't here because uh, Queen Iran, the guars. Diagram. Nope. <laughs> the Ark cult of the guar, guar is strong. <laughs> yeah. No. So in Skyrim, the random revelers who give you free alcohol, they're they're good dudes. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> There is some absolute good in this world. Yeah, yeah. Why does it seem like it always relates to the creatures rather than any of the people? And why are they all? Where, and why are they all drunk or getting everyone else drunk? <laughs> <laughs> so okay. So the thing that we've the thing that we've determined so far in the first I don't know what 10, 15 minutes of this show is uh, the only good in Tamriel has to do with creatures getting people drunk or yeah, drunkards that's... or. So alcohol, right. so alcohol as the escape is <laughs> is the only good that exists. Uh-huh. Just getting too real. <laughs> this is <laughs> with everything that we've gone through in 2020. This might be the right. only truth that we can actually hold on to at this point. Yeah. No. All right. This, yeah. So another parallel to our real world. Camriel is just 2020, and the solution is apparently happy little animals that provide us booze got it all uh-huh. right <laughs> yep yep so this is funny I, I just gave away three loot uh stream loot packs in the chat and people have been redeeming them <laughs> and whatever the, you probably just heard a voice pop up that was the stream loots pack um, i keep seeing them up in the corner <laughs> yeah it, it, this is crazy it's a crazy celebration crazy stuff is happening today um uh, yeah i'm gonna have to stew on that as as for anything else that really represents good what about okay okay what about uh, go with me here Mike the liar. Now he's a liar, but mm-hmm. there's something about him that actually tells the truth because he breaks the fourth wall, right? All right. All right. He's also a prophet. He's a prophet. Yep. He foresaw the horses and the dragons, and he was right. He was on top of things. Yeah, yeah, and okay. he he doesn't hurt anybody. He doesn't demand yeah, he anything never... from anyone. He just goes along on his own little merry way. Every time he meets you, he gives you a bit of knowledge. He just shares willingly with whoever he comes across. Yeah. Whether it's not whether or not it's useful is right. something else, or even understandable so to the character <laughs> in the game. You know, but whatever. Hmm. I mean, okay. I do smile every time I talk to him. <laughs> there you go. Well, one time I talked to him and he told me that he used a um, Dunmer ash pit as a litter box. I, I don't think it was malicious, <laughs> though. He didn't, <laughs> he didn't mean to, I'm sure. <laughs> Maybe but, he just had to go. And he was just being honest about it. You know, like, mm-hmm. this is what happened. He was, he was. Yeah. All right. He just needs. <laughs> so, right, a bit of a <laughs> cultural education, maybe. <laughs> Don't go in the ash pit. I mean, it, so, it could look like clay litter over in Vardenfell. I mean, that place is a mess. So, it could, yeah, it could. Uh, so, okay, so we, animals and or people making people drunk or being drunk, and what is most likely an insane Khajiit. Insa- yeah, insanity and drunkenness is where we're at here right who's possibly achieved like chim at this point because well, he's like <laughs> yeah who knows what's going yeah. on or is or is the spirit of Lorcan, according to some people or whatever right yeah like uh, okay maybe maybe those those are the greatest goods that that can ever come into the world um i mean even even tyber septum even talus was like murdering people oh yeah. marching across yeah. the land you know like he was a good hor- hero for some but not everybody Parthenax, they, they've got some. We've got some other other thoughts here in chat. Parthenax, yep. yeah, yeah, like in Saint Jib for a while. Yeah, Saint Jib. Yeah, there's He's some redemption. Guy. There's some redemption there. Uh, Uncle Shea, <laughs> Uncle Shea <Gora. laughs> Um Nothing says mm. Almighty Good like making someone into an entrail <laughs> instrument. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
Uh, yeah, I, I'm, yeah, no, <laughs> not not Shane Gorth. <laughs> Hermes Mora, Hermes Mora, absolutely, 100%. absolutely, All right? Okay. 100%. No, because, okay, did you see what he did to that poor skull? Yeah, but how do you know that he wasn't like I don't know, uh, giving poison candy to people on uh, witches festival? Because maybe, they- maybe frozen north where there's like nothing but blubber to eat well then maybe it's poisoned blubber i don't know i assume there was a good reason behind it hermes more rules he wanted a book you give you give every you give him the, the benefit of the doubt i'm gonna give him the better i'm gonna give him a hard pass he just gets to slide on through that whole right. situation His slippery yep. tentacle body just slides right through yeah, yeah. Or he can miss, whatever the situation i i vote yes on hermes mora all right all right well, we'll keep on stewing on this chat. If you if you guys have any other thoughts on anybody who who represents like pure good on this spectrum, uh, let us know as as we continue to talk. Anything else you wanted to add, uh, Pixie? Nothing else. Okay. That wraps it up for me. All right. Who wants to Who wants to go next? T Lotus. Anybody got, got any other thoughts on favorite parts of lore or why why the lore of Elder Scrolls is is so so freaking cool? <laughs> I think it's just the, how much there is to it um, and how much we still don't know about it. Mm-hmm. The, like, like the quantity. We just like got the... elsewhere like last year, right? And before that, we had some very, very specific Khajiit lore. <laughs> and That's very we true. held on to that <laughs> for a very long time. <laughs> <laughs> and that was all we had. <laughs> we got like mob lore Kaj. That was like one. one oh, I love the thing with of- the bells and stuff. Yeah. yeah. Holy yeah. smoke. Now, that's a really cool point um, because there was there was reference to things like, oh, there's different varieties of Khajiit depending on when they're born and what the phase of the moon is, all that kind of stuff. But we didn't get to experience any of that and really get any de- depth into it until the Elsewhere expansion. Yeah. Yeah. We've only seen a, a couple and mm-hmm. most of like the, the more, I don't know that interesting <laughs> versions of the Kiji and we got the CL Feeks and stuff. I was like, oh my god. I knew a lot of people who thought they were just going to retcon that. I was like, no way. <laughs> yeah, no. I, no they're too I'm good. really glad they actually because um, I'm not the biggest fan of the high fantasy aspects of Elder Scrolls, but I thought the Khajiit were like the perfect like, okay, they're clearly little house cats in appearance, but then if you like go to elsewhere, it's like, oh, well, they use magic and put on hats and they have little vests and they have their own little and I'm like, okay, this actually works pretty well in my opinion. I was like, I, I actually do kind of like the way this is just like, yeah, they can totally pass as like almost makeshift spies, just people thinking they're house cats because house cats are also like a thing. But then it's like, well, okay, is it a house cat or is it actually, a, you know, an Elfique? And when you're in the culture themselves and elsewhere you get to see a lot of them just kind of roaming around because it's part of it all of them have their first docs and they're used to it as opposed to you know in skyrim it's people trying to understand it or cyrodiil it's people trying to understand their culture that's just their culture so Mm -hmm. could you say the same thing about the argonians before the expansion in uh oh yeah definitely the the only thing yeah well and i I, not to get too nitpicky because i don't like when people get too nitpicky on on like precise things of lore and what's canon and blah 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 blah. but one thing that i really wish they had done and i i would be fine with them retroactively doing it like if they flesh out more of black marsh i would love it if they would replace all of the way shrines with root worms because that should be the fast travel network and anybody who doesn't know what a root worm is is to travel around black marsh you find these soft patches of uh like just earth and there are these gi- there are these giant worms essentially that um are traveling under the swamps and in order to fast travel around this i forget the exact book that this is from uh it's think it might be a dance in fire but in order to travel what they will do is you push into it and they're like these amoeba type things you actually go into the root worms and it propels you to your destination while it's digesting you and then you like (laughs) 
pop out at your destination. This so, is like so they eat it's you like and poop candy. you out. Correct. So you get and this is totally <laughs> like a thing all the way from Skyrim that you can read in the books. And I was so let down that there weren't these just like bubbling piles of junk and i was like oh but then they were just way shrines it's like please make them horrible horrible root worms in the future that would make me very happy or a mix of both i mean what if i mean there's a whole northern part of that that area in the map that we don't have anything yep. for yet in elder scrolls online right 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 you could have an entire network of root worms along with way shrines you know and the way shrines connect yeah, you well, to I mean, say other way shrines but then the root worms like move you from the south part of the map to the north part of the map or whatever well it made me think of the same way silt striders were in varden I was about to say that. yeah it's like okay it's another form of fast travel it's like well we don't really need these way shrines here just like just just make some nasty ass root worms and let us just slide around <laughs> then they have to add like a like an animation and um like a texture that gets on your character that makes it look all dirty and like digested like it just got what pooped out and then you have to like ball. brush yourself just off <laughs> same mud ball animation <laughs> yeah from, from new life okay and and it's the uh, situation when when you get like feared in like PvP or something with the CC effect, and your character screams like ah, just do that. Except slowly <laughs> lower your character into the ground, and it's perfect. It's do this for me, Zoss. It'll make me very happy. Just your cycle, there goes, yeah. You know, like <laughs> just make yeah. You don't need animations. <laughs> <laughs> So we've had we've had some comments in chat about things like uh, the breadth of the of the lore, um, the unreliable narrator aspect to it. That's great. Um, yeah, the fact that we have uh, all sorts of different documents written at different times from different perspectives, and oftentimes they conflict, or they have different accounts of the same thing in very different ways. Um, and and I've talked about this on the show before. I, I have a degree in religious studies and a degree in philosophy because I I very much wanted to make sure that I was not employable at all once I left college. And <laughs> um, <laughs> and uh, this is one of the things that you find with like real world stories and myths and and religious books. And I mean even I mean being that we are Americans, we're most likely most uh, familiar with say the Christian. Uh, theology but I mean just look at the four gospels and uh, there's very few situations that all four gospels explain exactly the same way even though uh, and this gets into deeper stuff even though they were like uh, Matthew and um, was it Matthew and Mark and Luke were pulling from Mark and actually quoting that in some of their works without actually quoting it at the time but we're using mm -hmm. it as a source document I mean there's there's all of this stuff that goes on in real world literature that happens in whether it was initially intended or not, but is now part of the lore and the mystique of everything that happens in the Elder Scrolls. So that you get these variations and all sorts of things. So yeah, I think that is really cool. You guys have any any thoughts on any of that stuff? So whenever I think of unreliable narrator, like it's obviously like if we step back from the lore, it's definitely a good way for them to build on because Arena came out in what, 94? So it's great that they have this way to go back over the years and like change things. Like Lotus was saying earlier, like lizard mans became Argonians. <laughs> yeah, lizard <laughs> and, mans, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and now orcs suddenly have all of this culture and stuff that they didn't have before in the first game. Uh, and another thing that they can use to do that, which is now integrated within the lore, is dragon breaks. Mm -hmm. where they can handle all of these different things happening that the player could be doing differently. And I think it's a really clever way. It, it feels less like a cop-out the way they do it, because they have this unreliable narrator that's explained kind of in-universe. They have these dragon breaks that are explained in-universe. So everything does feel possible, and it does still feel like it's going along with this lore. And I, I really appreciate the way they do that. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I think and well, what's also cool about it is that one of your primary godlike beings is is the god of time. <laughs> so you have this, you know, yeah. a dragon break is basically having to do with time and I don't know, something connected to that deity or that deity not being functioning in reality in the moment or whatever. And of course, there's all sorts of theories and ideas around that, too. Um but and that's this is one of those things that makes this difficult to talk about sometimes is because you can't just drop one explanation for a thing. 
like uh, and believe me i'm i'm, I'm 100, 100 episodes into this show if i just give you if i just point and point out like yeah the reason for dragon breaks is x then there will be somebody who writes me and says i thought the reason for dragon breaks is y and it's like well okay it's x or it's y or it's z and there's a lot of different reasons for people believing those things but i didn't have the time to go into it in the moment so i was just referring to one of them you know like <laughs> you just get stuck and it's like yes there's more to it than that but just like just go with me here for this one example <laughs> like, yeah it's, um, it's very tough to condense topics in this world down to a reasonable thing that also doesn't bleed into like 14 other topics at the same time oh as yeah well. oh yeah oh yeah and yes completely and it, it's very easy to just you know take a perspective on a thing and then somebody just comes along and goes well i don't like that host because he believes this thing and that's false and it's like well <laughs> is it do we really know <laughs> yeah did i have time yeah. to go over all the other things no <laughs> like, my unreliable narrator says this no <laughs> right right so it it, it is kind of a complication, but it is one of the beautiful things about it in that we can come to it from all these different angles. Um, I think it also connects to the idea that it's in this world, it, and I would agree that this is actually true in our own world as well, it's better to be on the fence about things. It's, it's better to be okay to be a skeptic and okay to be... Uh, for lack of better words, an agnostic when it comes to what the truth of the thing is and just allow yourself to continue collecting information and say, well, here is a version of this that I know, whether that's the truth or not, you know, Lily Cat underscore day has people may, not, may not be able to confirm that or not. Maybe there's more evidence for this as opposed to something else, but maybe there isn't, you know, there, there, there's always just a maybe um, the gray maybe. Yeah. So it's it's complex and that that makes it kind of fun i think yeah it, for sure yeah it keeps it keeps it interesting absolutely so, so that's a it's a really cool idea t uh, do you have anything else about the i mean you're talking about just the the quantity of it too do you have any other thoughts about that oh um i guess so i, I used to role play a lot in eso and lore used to be extremely intimidating for people because they, they don't want to play a character that doesn't know anything that they're not supposed to know or do know, right? Um, so I used to always tell people to pick a race and um, a region that they liked and just like learn everything you can about that. And you can have some sort of consistency. And then after that, you can start looking at all the other races and all the other lands, and then your mind's going to be blown that they all have their own 100 different opinions about the exact same topic, yeah. kind of like we were talking about before. It's, it's um, like, uh, there, there's some lore about how the the Bossler and the Khajiit are pretty closely related. Um, yep. And because you think they're they're myrrh. Uh, but of course, all the myrrh are like, no. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> right. Right. No. <laughs> right. Yeah. And, and like, of course, the high elves are like, nobody else's lizards, opinions are legit elves. at all. Just mine. Yes. You know? yeah. No one else but a myrrh. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's it's neat. I think that's a smart idea. Is just you know just start in one little corner of the world and just learn what it means to be that that thing, and then go from mm -hmm. there. I think that's probably why Skyrim was so uh, comparatively easy for people to associate with, because you have a very mannish culture, right? You have the Nords, and uh, like we've all seen Vikings. Basically, they're snow Vikings, right? Like they're just they're you know they don't do a whole lot of boating but they do some but other than that they're just vikings who live up in the mountains and they talk like vikings and we can we can ad identify with that oh and there's dragons and they fight them and this one can steal the souls of dragons okay that's cool you know like th th that's not too complex this world isn't too complex yeah okay yeah we'll move out of that zone and tell me what you think about like you know just just go a little bit to the east <laughs> we'll see we'll see how complex things get over in morrowind right um but yeah, it's there's just so much there. It's it's almost like it's almost like they took a bunch of different stories and kind of patched them all into the same world, which is kind of what <laughs> happened when you look at the, the list of the mainline games in each of the zones as they got from one game to the next. Um, and then just kind of fit them all together. 
which is kind of cool. But uh, again, that kind of it relates to different cultures and the way that different cultures see themselves as being like the center of the universe and people outside of that group, the out groups are foreign. Oh, they, they believe in weird gods and weird things and weird. Their history of the world is different and they have all these other weird beliefs and they just don't quite match up. But yet they all point to something similar. Pretty so cool. no good segue goes unutilized unless you point out what a good segue it is. So <laughs> you actually segued right into what I would have as my favorite thing. All right. Which is the the environment the lands themselves the regions that we play in are by far my favorite thing i know there's great stories i know there's like all these different races that we've been talking about it's the actual physical place that all of this takes you know place on on nern and you want to get farther out tamriel or i'm sorry closer in you get tamriel farther out you get you know the mundus and oblivion and everything like that but the actual area is always what has hooked me right from the very start and exactly to your point it's like okay well there's the nords and they take place up in skyrim and it's snowy and it's okay here's here's their thing it's got like a viking feel in elder scrolls for oblivion it was like okay this is like your typical medieval fantasy setting more or less and that's yeah. that's the majority of what cyrodiil is but then you go back a game and it's like okay morrowind and most people's responses upon landing in morrowind is what what is this like why yes. are there mushroom powers <laughs> there's this catch. yeah there's this translucent <laughs> ant that is destroying me it's like what is happening and it's like and that just that happened to me. be right at the right at a time in game development where we moved over to polygonal <laughs> structures but there weren't that many polygons in say a body so that mm -hmm. even the regular looking people looked alien <laughs> <laughs> that's not incorrect <laughs> but yeah that's so that to me has always been like the draw and like when i originally picked up the series for the first time i remember being like morrowind that's a cool name and i looked at the box art and i was just like oh this this sounds neat and when i started playing it i just remember being like okay what am i doing like what is this mm -hmm. and i came from you <laughs> know everybody's drag. i know but it's like my background because i a lot of people grew up with video games i kind of did but it was like okay my come i was coming from halo call of duty doom madden and i'm like oh what's this thing and on my friend's xbox i started playing i was like okay what what the hell is this? <laughs> like, what is this? <laughs> and where's the football? I, where's the gun? Yeah. And, <laughs> and for so long until I bought my own copy, I don't think I did anything in that game. I just wandered around being like, I can just kill this person and take their house. And now I can fill it with junk. And it's like, I yeah. turned it into a makeshift skooma den. And it's like, it was just <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah by the way when we were talking about like universal out. goods yeah not me um, <laughs> <laughs> but, well your name is lotus of doom <laughs> <laughs> valid <laughs> but yeah so that's that's been long-standing like i'm always so excited to see where we go and what it looks like when we get there um so for me it's definitely the world of the actual games I, I had a similar experience, and I've talked about this before on the show, but it's worth relaying uh, again. I, I tried Morrowind. I bounced right off of it. Um, I didn't I didn't get past like the first little area you start in because I couldn't first figure, scrib. I couldn't figure out how to hit, <laughs> freaking hit the rat that was attacking me. You know, and I was just, <laughs> it's just like, why can't I hit anything? This game sucks. Um, <laughs> years later, I've gone back and I've done a little bit more than that. But, uh, but Oblivion came out, right? And I... It was the first game that I've played, and I've played many games before that, uh, role-playing games, all sorts of different games. This was the first role-playing game where I felt like I was legitimately in a world where I couldn't predict what was going to happen, and, I, and this, like to your point, had the freedom to go do whatever I wanted, because I didn't want to do the main quest right away. I, the world was interesting enough just leaving the sewer and just seeing the world open up and go okay i can just go anywhere and do anything what okay what even is there to do it felt like the world was infinite um and one of the first things that happened when i started exploring the world is i, I came across what turned out to be a vampire den and didn't realize it was a vampire den was able to fight my way through the vampire den and kill 
the uh, you know killed a bunch of the thralls and those things and came across the dude at the end of the thing which was a vampire and i didn't realize it killed him took a bunch of stuff he had a bunch of cool stuff in his in his little den and i was like well that was really cool found a bunch of cool things left was diseased didn't realize it because i didn't read the pop-up because i was too busy looking at everything right (laughs) i didn't know vampires were even a thing in the world because the the, the world was so weird and crazy you know all, all the different i didn't understand the lore or, or even if vampires could be in the lore i had no idea um and then started having weird dreams when i would have to sleep because in oblivion you have to sleep uh or you, you generally should sleep if i is that right in order to you yeah. level up i think to you level up that's yeah Correct. so leveling yeah. up required sleep right um so yeah so i had to sleep every so often and then i started having these weird dreams and then all of a sudden people t- started telling me that I, I didn't look like I, I was doing very well and i was like what do you what do you mean my character looks fine <laughs> like i couldn't understand what was going on and then finally looked it up on the internet and i, and I was like what is this what is going on and i was like oh oh i'm turning it i've turned into a vampire wait what and then i was like well i don't want to be a vampire how do I fix this? And I had to look up like, okay, there is a quest where you have to go find some old lady all the way across the map in the middle of nowhere in order to go on a quest in order to get her the ingredients to make the potion. And then that, that can, you know, and then you have to jump through a few more hoops in order. And I was like, I don't know if I want to do that. <laughs> and I was, I was legitimately in this like dilemma at the time because I was like, I, uh, I'm just trying to figure out like is, is this how I want to play my character do I want to be a vampire what is, you know like what does that really even mean like, mm-hmm. what what implications does that have in this world I have no idea it was all so new that I didn't I didn't know to video game it yet because it didn't feel it felt like anything was possible whereas most games feel like you can kind of see the boundaries it, it, even in the world building even in like the you know what's pot- what's potential in the world it felt open and possible enough to do anything that I didn't feel contained. And I think that's that. And if we're going uh, and we can still talk about like places and stuff, because I don't want to skip your topic. But if we, if we go into the lore, I, I think that's the part of it that really grabs me is that sense of uh, and it, it goes to T's point as well, that there is just kind of this. It's, it's boundless when the next mainline game comes out. I'm I'm sure we're going to get things that we didn't know to even expect and that they're going to expand those boundaries even further and uh, the world is going to feel bigger and different and not just on a physical scale like on a storytelling scale and on the potential of what kinds of things are in the world um, and how how the world even works the boundaries of magic all of that stuff is going to be a little bit different Um, so that's that's what really does it for me so Lotus, let's. Uh, so you're talking about like physically the world. So w- w- let's go into that a little bit more. Do you mean like the different the different regions in Tamriel? Do you mean like the different continents? Do you mean like the combination of all of these things and Oblivion on top of that? Yes, it's because the planes themselves are so unique, um, and then you know the diversity in the actual series like you had mentioned earlier it's almost like they just took all these different pieces and then combined them to make like a living world which essentially seems exactly like the case because it's like they vary so much from one place to another place to another place and then as if you know I had mentioned like the high fantasy not being super my thing. Mm-hmm. One of the things I do really like is you get to the Somerset Isles and the high fantasy definitely kicks up. When I say high fantasy, I mean <clears throat> like a lot of magic, by the way, if, if that's not clear. Um, what do you call it? But yeah, so that type of deal. And then when you really want to just like throw any of that out and just get weird, then come the planes of oblivion which is just like okay you have nightmare worlds you have worlds made out of literal books and acid water for some reason and (laughs) like there's so many different things and we still haven't seen each of the daedric realms which i am i mean some of them sound so horrific i don't actually know how they would ever put them in game but eso briefly touches on uh the spiral skine which uh-huh. we need to go back there just yeah. the brief period of time we were there i was like this place is awesome yeah and i totally want to see more of it but um yeah it's just there's so much just to the environment and i play these games um very I, it's gonna sound weird but very gamey like i just like try to gaming the system like being just messing around as my character is like one of my favorite 
things. So just being able to explore all this stuff is fascinating to me when I'm when I'm roaming around running amok and stealing every box that isn't nailed down. <laughs> right. Right. And to build on what Lotus was saying, um, so my first memory of an Elder Scrolls game was whenever I was like eight or nine years old playing Morrowind and I see this giant mushroom tower. I'm like, that is so cool. And it just made me want to like get more into the games. It was a friend's game. So I didn't actually get into Elder Scrolls myself until way later with Skyrim. But uh, I've since gone back. I've played a little bit of Oblivion. I played some more of Morrowind, but I can't hit things in Morrowind. So <laughs> right, <laughs> you can't hit them. You have to swing no at things ten, ten times before you hit it, <laughs> and then you have to do that like a hundred times before you can do it consistently. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. So eventually, I'll go back. Like whenever that one is remade, either by a fan or by Bethesda. So I'll play it sometime. Mm-hmm. But uh, <laughs> that was my big. I remember whenever Elder Scrolls Online was announced. And I remember hearing that it was going to be all across Tamriel and it was going to look gorgeous. And I was like, wow, I really want to see Valenwood. I really want to see Elsewhere. I want to see Somerset. I want to see Black Marsh. And I was like, I can go everywhere and not just be stuck in Skyrim or Cyrodiil. And that was just a huge draw for me to this particular game. And it totally delivered in that. Like I was able to just, there are times where I like to turn off the music in the game as great as it is and just wander and just listen to the sounds in Valenwood or especially Black Marsh has really mm-hmm. awesome ambient noise, especially mm-hmm. when it rains. It's just incredible. The world itself is just so rich and detailed and gorgeous to just walk around in. And each biome is so different. So if you walk through the forest in in Grotwood, for example, it's completely different than walking through a forest over in Glenumbra because you don't have those giant grot oaks. And I... Uh, differ a little bit from Lotus. I do really love the high fantasy aspect, so I absolutely adore Somerset. So it's it's just so cool and there is something for everyone. Like Lotus isn't a high fantasy fan and he loves these other areas, but then there's it touches on the high fantasy folks with Somerset and all of them. Right. It's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. There is a lot of variety and a lot of breadth to it. Um yep. Yeah, so, uh, cool stuff. All right, well, we need to jump to the middle of the show because I have to I have to thank patrons and things like that. But we'll be back in just a little bit to, uh, and I've got a question for you guys that I'm going to pose, and we'll get back in just a second. The skies are marked with numberless sparks, each a fire. And everyone a sign. So as usual, I have to thank all of our patrons. You guys are what helps make this show a real thing because I'm still working to do this full time. And this is one of the shows that I do. And and your support is extremely, extremely appreciated. So if you're interested in helping to support the show, then check out patreon.com slash Elder Scrolls Lorecast. You can, for a very, very small amount of money, get ad free episodes early and all of that kind of stuff. We will next week be having our monthly patron episode. So tier four patrons and higher can join us monthly to talk on the patron episode and that always gets decided in the discord chat where we all kind of chat about what to talk about every month so check that out if you're interested in supporting the show also the show is brought to you by the uh the different sponsors on the robots radio network including audiobooks.com and we have a very special deal that gets you three free audiobooks by simply clicking the link in the show notes and it's super easy to do you just sign up you get three free audiobooks you don't even have to pay any money or anything and it's really really easy to do check check the link for this sh- for that in the show notes there's a bunch of other links as well they get you discounts on other purchases and things like that that, that can help support us and also get you guys a good deal so go check that stuff out all right let's get back to our lore discussion yes yes you're entirely brilliant conquering madness and all that blah 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 so guys um i think i think you've brought some really interesting points i'm so glad that you joined me for this this is is very cool i mean it's it's always fun to just kind of nerd out with your friends about the (laughs) things that we all love right like this is uh, people are like oh podcasters it's a lot of work to do this every week and well yes but it's a lot of fun too so um so thank you for for coming and joining joining me with that stuff now i wanted i want to kind of turn this on its head a little bit I want you to take take the things that we know about the world, about the lore, about the way the Elder Scrolls works. And if you were to have your way, is there something that you would change or add 
or subtract? Is there is there something about the way the lore works, stories, things that you would want to add to it, um, expand upon, um, remove completely? <laughs> you know, like, and I mean that that would be a dangerous path to go down. But I'm sure, and controversial, I'm sure. Like, oh, why well, uh, Hermes Mori needs to be out, and then of course Lotus would be like. <laughs> I'm not no. on the show anymore. Sorry. See you. <laughs> this um, will be my last lore cast. This will be my last lore cast. Um, but it, like, what would you change or, or add to like, and we can even do this from the perspective of if you were to be in charge of say the next, uh, let's say two expansions from now for elder scrolls online, or um, some of the events that are going to happen in the elder scrolls six, what would you where would you want to go with it? What would you want to change or do or uh, flesh out more or retcon? Well, I, <laughs> I, I really did like how Elsewhere dove so deep into the Khajiit because there was a lot of just blank areas for the Khajiit. We just didn't know a lot about them. Mm -hmm. And I know with Merkmire, we started to dive more into Argonian lore, but that little taste we got with Merkmire, I'd love to expand on that in a game more so than we've already seen because that DLC just really made me fall in love with Argonians. And yeah. I do feel like they're super special. It would be cool to have... I know it's like different time and everything, but it may be in a future game or something of that nature, getting to see the Anzalil invade Cold Harbor and things like that. Is that super cool lore. It'd be awesome yeah. to see them come back. I, I would love to see more about the Argonians specifically. Yeah. Or like a, gr a greatest hits from history, like flashbacks. Yeah. <laughs> like be fun like too. Argonians <laughs> invading Cold Harbor or, um, uh, yeah, the yeah, Tiber Septum using the um, what was it called? The the big giant robot that the drummer made. Um, the uh, oh, uh, uh, the Numidium, the Numidium, and like wiping out just like swaths of of people, you know, or, <laughs> or elves or whatever he was fighting at the time, you know, like like just like some of, or the the bat the Battle of Red Mountain to just get a glimpse of like what was that actually like, you know. That would be really kind of neat to like see yeah. some of those really key moments in the histories. We do kind of have that mechanic like in the universe already because in Skyrim, main Skyrim sp story spoilers here, um, whenever you are trying to figure out how to do the dragon wrench shout, you do go back in time for a little bit or you, you see a glimpse back in time mm -hmm. of the heroes using that shout on a dragon. So... I mean, it wouldn't be a stretch to add something like that. And I think it'd be pretty cool. It happens in a lot of the Elder Scrolls online story bits, too, where you'll go like yeah. into the mind of somebody in the past and see like, oh, you know, 300 years before this is what was happening or whatever was happening in the storyline that's relevant. Well, those dream strides that are part of the story have kind of um, managed to sneak their way into giving you like a glimpse into the past where it's like, right. well, you're you're living through this memory type of deal. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm hmm. Yeah, that's a cool idea. Um, Lotus or T? Do you guys have any thoughts on this? Um, so, let's see. I, I would say <laughs> one thing that uh, was brought up in chat, uh, w which I totally agree with, <laughs> is not having levitation as a banned form of magic. Because... <laughs> <laughs> Because uh -huh. that's really neat that they wrote it in that they're like, yeah, okay, this can't, this is going to mess up the load screens. We cannot d do this. Like, no. <laughs> but at the same time, I loved having levitation in Morrowind. And, you know, prior back, there's been some interesting ones that I found along the way. But j that's like a one specific game mechanic that I'm like, okay, I, I actually really would like that back. So if we're going to like, I don't, know. Something. You don't even need to retcon it <laughs> yeah but just like okay make it so that they i it, it was neat that they put it in but like okay let's uh let's edit that so that it's like okay the mages guild is now okay with that again is is one thing but i really want them to go to uh vale of wood uh, ideally i really want to see more of that place in a mainline game and, not just in Elder in a, Online. in a yeah. mainline game because i really love the wilder queen wilder king storyline when you're there in eso for the old mary dominion storyline mm -hmm. that was really awesome i i just love the vibe of that place so to have them fill that out and have a mainline full fleshed out 
nonsense hour game just based on that i think would be really really cool yeah yeah that's one of those zones that i mean we only have it in elder scrolls online um, yeah but there's a lot of there's a lot of mystery surrounding the bosmer and yes the wild hunt and you know some of the other things going mm-hmm. on and their their relation to nature and animals as opposed to just the myrrh uh that whole side of it like uh, you mentioned with the khajiit stuff yep. um yeah yeah i could see that i could see that being fleshed out a little bit more t do you have any thoughts on this uh just real quick um one thing that uh gets me is they like front loaded dominion with valenwood zones yes um, and ESO. <laughs> they sure did and i really okay everyone knows um uh, from my stream that my least favorite zone is gruntwood because i can't <laughs> Navigate it for anything, and it's all cliffs. I'm just like walking along a cliff for like a half hour. I don't know what's going on. Mm-hmm. I would absolutely love to see uh, not just Villainwood, but a lot of the ESO map, like the main storyline places, redone. And I know that's a ridiculously huge job, but they've learned so much about. Um, like building zones and storytelling and it really makes me upset that places like Valenwood like where would they go with Valenwood? There's not a whole lot they could do. Um and then we didn't get any like barely any Somerset and elsewhere. Um right. that's part of the reason I didn't I didn't go Dominion. I was really <laughs> upset with it's just all Valenwood. Right. <laughs> so but now now and we well, i don't know if we'll ever see a like a chapter of villain where we really see like everything they've learned get fleshed out and it makes me incredibly sad also retcon imperials just kidding no imperials <laughs> <laughs> wait, 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 wait. So does that mean that like the um the elves they like they never rebel? The the Alessian re- <laughs> uh, who knows? Everything would probably be a lot more simple in uh Yeah, gut gardens and <laughs> all that stuff would still be around. Danger worship would be like the main part of the continent. <laughs> yeah. No, it's fine. Yeah, it's fine. I I can't think of anybody who's a huge Imperials fan, so it's fine. I'm sure nobody will miss them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We'll just put the aliens back in. Every they were they were cool with everybody. Perfect. <laughs> so on that note though, because again, I I don't mean to make it sound simple, but I do agree because like all of Alenwood is essentially pretty much covered. Um but at the same time, the th- one thing they kind of uh, deleted and retconned themselves mm-hmm. was um, the Falonesti are not there, and neither are um, any of the what are those pesky little monkey people called? The <laughs> capes. Oh, Imga. Imga, the thank Imga, you. Yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> so just call them pesky little monkey people. Yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> sure. So, like that whole thing, obviously done for story slash technical reasons. I assume this is a total pipe dream. Um, but it would be very cool if, for some reason, they explained like what the deal is with the Falinasti in detail and somehow used that and them returning since they are walking tree cities pretty much if that gave a reason to remodel the zone Mm -hmm. that would be now granted that sounds like a horrific undertaking that i can't imagine from a programming side but nonetheless it would just be a cool way that they could almost at least for that zone specifically do a revamp where it's like, oh, well, there's less mountains because the felon SD stomped it down. So it's less obnoxious to try to travel around the place. Yeah. But like, yeah, uh, I agree. yeah it, it, it would 100%. be cool. Yeah, it'd be a cool concept. Now on the technical side of things, I pff, can't even imagine that. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we can imagine we can go like, this would be really neat. But yeah, like, it, OK, give them six more years in order to really do it and build it out that well that's the other thing about elder scrolls online like we keep filling in sections of the map but each zone is only a few miles like wide yeah 
right? So it's not actually the size that it would be if that was a real place. It's just right. kind of it's a miniaturized version of it so that we can actually travel across it and do things. Um, but if they were to design it at scale for what it's like, really like you go back to something like Daggerfall. And if you design things at that scale, then the world would be so huge. You would model just like one little city at a time and then maybe a piece of the wilderness. <laughs> and then like you would never be able to do a zone. It would just be too much. Um, but I, I would like, like you guys are saying, I would like, like if you took, if you took any of the zones and you just expanded it by like two to four times, you know, like added a little bit more into that area and just kind of made it bigger and, you know, in some places more easily to navigate. Um, but that also makes me wonder like, okay, like let's, let's extrapolate Elder Scrolls Online out five more years. Do they fill in all the empty zones and where do they go from there? You know, like... They have to get creative and go back to Cold Harbor and build that out some more. Like, what else do we do? Can't wait for the Elder Scrolls Two or <laughs> Elder Scrolls Online Two. Elder, Elder Scrolls, Scrolls Online, Online Two. Yeah, and and the if that's the case, ending. then where does that go? Yeah. Do they do they yeah. they rebuild everything again? Like, how does that work? Um, right. I'm sure there are talks about this behind closed doors about like, okay, well, this is kind of the lifespan of the game, and if it gets this far, then this is where we're going to go next, and and that kind of stuff. Um, but uh, it's you know the mystery to me. Now, what I would love to see on, on a similar topic would be expansions out into some of the other continents and that has always been uh this very foggy area you know like um yakuda is kind of in the past is it still even there what about where the elves came from what about where the nords came from what about um you know the continent to the east to the sayesi and like we have the history of them being not that long ago in you know the middle of the second era um, disappeared or, or removed from Tamriel and they were Manish but what about the myths about them being snake like beings and those kinds of things so are there remnants of them on the other continent or maybe they're still lording over the other continent and what about that stuff you know um, I, I think there's other places you can go with that but does that move it too far away from the mainline focus of Tamriel being the thing um, I don't know I think it would be exciting I also think it would be really exciting to see more into the lives of, say, and I've mentioned this before, like the Dremora or, um, you know, what if you could make a different race that isn't one of the main nine or whatever many that we get, you know, that is from one of these other continents. That would be kind of I mean, they've cool. done it before with orcs. And, they've expanded and it before. Continents. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that could be really interesting. You know, what if there's some sort of connection to the Daedra influencing Tamriel and like Mundus but maybe the next playable character isn't a, a mainline race like what if it's a Dremora and that gains like personhood or something you know oh, weird the, it would be that I mean, would be super weird but who knows Dremora are also immortal so it, it makes like the whole like right now and mm -hmm. the way they can explain you just coming back all the time is because of the soulless thing mm -hmm. yep so mm -hmm. I mean it has a built-in way for you to come back from the dead all the time. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You know, what if, yeah, yeah what other if there's about the fourth wall breaking quick save, <laughs> you're, you're just <laughs> dead when you're dead. <laughs> like you don't get a mulligan. Whereas in ESO, it's part of the story. It's like, no, I'm back. Right. Right. Yeah, I'm back. I don't know. I, I think it'd be neat to kind of push those boundaries. Um, but I don't know that we would expect to see that in something like Elder Scrolls Online. I have a feeling if those boundaries are going to get pushed, it'll be by the main studio. Um, and it'll be something like Elder Scrolls 6 or 7. Um, it's going to have to come directly from and be overseen by Todd Howard and the main team if we're going to get mm -hmm. anything that's that uh, lore expanding. That'd be my guess. You know, that's funny because I feel the opposite. Really? <laughs> I feel like uh, Bethesda has gotten way more uh cautious mm -hmm. about what they put in the elder scrolls game like we were talking about you go from like marwin to Cyrodiil to skyrim yeah like marwin was so out there and they've just been reining it in a lot more yep. uh trying to appeal to as many people as possible obviously right it's goals. true yeah it's true um but eso has done a lot of stuff i don't think bethesda would would bet on 
anymore in the main series games. Like, um, honestly, I don't know if we'll ever see Black Marsh. I don't think we'll ever see Elsewhere. Like, I, I think they'd be too afraid to try and push uh, kitty cats and lizards. I think you're right. Masses. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think you're right. We've also gotten Clockwork City in ESO, which is I never really thought we were going to see that. And so mm-hmm. now that I've they they added this like completely out of left field, like they had to come up with different explanations as to why you could find wood. Yeah, <laughs> yep. yeah. Cloth and things like that. Um, so. I do think it would be kind of like a later in this in the lifespan project. I think that's why we didn't see elsewhere for so long because they had to do a lot of different models that they probably wouldn't need to like gray more feels like it was probably a a more relaxed uh chapter as far as having to build models they didn't have to do any new. Um, right. class animation things like that right yeah so, i mean if you I were to do know, something like if you were to do something like the dramora you could reuse assets from like cold harbor and and some of those areas and expand on that um i don't know i, I think that there's i think there's potential outside of tamriel is you know i think that would right. be really really cool um now maybe you do it through like a historic lens maybe you go back to um at mora or uh, you know the the uh, Yakuda at the time that the Yakudans were leaving the continent and the destruction of the continent if it was actually fully destroyed, which probably wasn't. There's probably still islands out there, but maybe some of that stuff. Um, more clockwork. <laughs> um, yeah, <laughs> there, like there's. I think there's some really cool stuff we could still do that could bring it outside of the the main zones, and I think that would be really really neat. Yeah, to to T's point, it, it's kind of interesting because I do I definitely they, some people can t- complain that it's like oh they've done da- dumbed down the series and some people are like no they streamlined it and it's I think a little of both they want to water it down for mass appeal so they don't go quite as weird in some aspects and then you know whether you prefer or dislike a lot of their gameplay alterations from game to game to make it simpler or whatever that's you know another thing up for debate but i think the benefit that eso has where if you look at the base game it was only a little weird they've been able to kind of like now that they have their player base the game is known for being good like it's it's been growing I feel like that's given them a little carte blanche to be like, okay, you can explore some weird stuff in the series because they're people are jumping on board and have a mainstream thing that can keep them grounded if that's what they want. And then once they're hooked, it's like, okay, well, here's the weird stuff. Like that's, that's yep. like added in yeah. as opposed to you got to come in. It's like the first thing you're hit with is like cat people and dragons and lizard things. And <laughs> like me complaining, there aren't enough root worms in the game and stuff like that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's going to scare a lot with, of people with off. Elsewhere, they added necromancy, which is something right. that the player base really wanted. And yes. so like, even if you have no interest in Kiji, you have something to look forward to. Right. With uh-huh. elsewhere. So maybe we'll get, Argonia next time, maybe? Yeah. With a new class. Rootworm 2021. Yeah. Rootworm class. <laughs> you consume your enemies and poop them out and move them across the dungeon. No. <laughs> it's like Yoshi. But it's like it. Yoshi. <laughs> oh, man. Perfect. Yoshi class. <laughs> I mean, they are. Yoshi's like a little, a little dinosaur, right? That's kind of, I don't know. Lizard like <laughs> trying to make a connection. I don't know. Um, the they have the little Yoshi. Oh, yeah. Can, like jump people. Yep. See? Mm-hmm. It's all yeah, coming it's together. All, it's all it all works. It's all Yoshi coming Mount together. confirmed. Yeah, it's just a skin <laughs> they put on a on a guar. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. That's fun stuff. Well, guys, thanks for joining me. Um, I, I think we're kind of we, we've been talking for an hour. I think we're getting to the end of the show. Um, uh, as always, chat and people listening uh, at home, if you have any thoughts on any of these topics, I'd love to hear them. Feel free to jump into the Robots Radio Discord or shoot us a note on Twitter 
and continue the conversation there. Um, this stuff's always fun to talk to people about. So, uh, you know, please, please be, uh, uh, don't be afraid to join us is, is what I'm saying. Um, let's go back through everybody and uh, just if there's anything going on that you want to talk about or or just, you know, how people can get a hold of you or anything like that. Uh, T, you got anything cool happening? Oh, my God. I'm sorry. I was like paying attention to chat. <laughs> <laughs> is there is there anything anything you want to talk about that you're doing with your streams or ways that people can get a hold of you? Oh, um. I'm going to be doing a lot of uh, spoopy streaming this weekend and uh, with the new patch coming up. Spoopy. <laughs> spoopy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm still not over that on Twitter. Um, uh, the Zenimax employees ask every year. Oh my God. If it's okay to the word spoopy. <laughs> or is it unprofessional? <laughs> <laughs> they're like is it unprofessional and then <laughs> yeah it's a vote yes they know and every year it passes and so they just do it because that's wasn't it 92 percent in favor of spoopy <laughs> yes, this year yes. i believe <laughs> yeah i was very pro spoopy <laughs> i was also pro spoopy <laughs> yeah i was <laughs> who, who doesn't like spoopy I mean, what's wrong with people yeah <laughs> voters <laughs> look towards the chat which one of you then vote for you? <laughs> yeah yeah eight percent of everybody's wrong about something <laughs> <laughs> awesome awesome um hyper pixie what do you got going on so the night before halloween so on october 30th we're actually uh joining up with star dancer and noble to do an eso costume contest on oh, stream at fun. that's so fun that's great. Awesome. Awesome. It's going to be a blast. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Yeah. Go check that out. Um, and then, uh, Lotus, what do you, what do you have happening? Anything cool? So, um, I know you I, just, you get the two of you yeah. just did your, your big Pixie, last weekend. Yes. Stream um, Pixie thing. was a great member of the, uh, extra life marathon last weekend that we were talking about, uh, last couple of shows. And, uh, just a huge thank you to everybody that was involved, whether you hung out with us, rated us, donated anything. Um, we actually tallied it up and including, uh, part of the, what do you call it? The, uh, extra life United thing, which was, um, run earlier in the year. Uh, uh, our event managed to raise, uh, I believe we are sitting at $4,300 raised for the Boston Children's Hospitals, which is that's amazing. That's completely awesome. Completely mind boggling that everyone came out in force like that. It, it was, we, we had our goal at a thousand. So that'll just give you a gauge as to what we were looking at compared to what we, what we raised. Um, and I, <laughs> I, uh, myself, we, we had, uh, some interesting situations arise from our panic versions of making incentives because you guys <laughs> kept blowing everything we put out of the water. Um, so my next, uh, I I've got to get a time, but I'll keep everybody updated as one of my incentive rewards. I need to run a uh, 5K marathon on a treadmill while doing vet dungeons in ESO. Holy um, crap. So that'll be. Yeah, that sounds that, terrible. That, I'm sure it will be. Good luck. Have been made. Um, yeah, that, that was. Okay. So, well, at $2,000, so it seemed pretty like, yeah, this probably won't happen. It was like, oh boy. That's, oh boy. Uh, oh so boy. I have, I have a, I have a treadmill and I have my, I can raise my desk up because, uh, when I, when I was working from home, the job I used to work, I would do that during the day, right. In order to kind of like be able to walk and type and stuff. Mm -hmm. I've tried playing games where you have to run around like on a controller <laughs> while walking there are moments where like you're moving in one direction and your feet are moving in a different direction and then your brain goes and then you yeah. might happen to like not move your feet anymore and then you move forward on the treadmill or backwards okay. on the treadmill like there are like this can be dangerous make sure you have the little thing on there that like if you slip and fall padding around yeah. me when yeah. i'm doing this yeah um, have the I mean, little automatic being, off yeah. thing on connected to your waist because yeah, i'm gonna need to connect it to me yeah, yeah for yeah. sure for sure <laughs> um because that's not going to be short either uh a 5k 
usually uh, it takes me, you know, a while um, <laughs> to go through a 5k oh each God. year. And with COVID, I can't do it this year. So I figured this was a pretty good incentive. And uh, to anybody who plays on PC, um, I had to make a PC character. So I now I'm on PC. So I'm Lotus of Doom on ESO PC. So feel free to send me Yay. a friend request. Sweet. I, uh, I can join all of you for adventures and stuff now. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Swords with boards. Swords with boards, the Argonian. The Argonian. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, what? Oh man, I made an Argonian. Uh, what was he? He was like um, winks at ladies. That's that was his name. He's he's the ladies' man. <laughs> <laughs> It's just terrible. It was so creepy. If he wasn't a cute Argonian, he'd be like, "Why? Well, oh, this guy just walks around winking at ladies all the time. What a creep!" Uh, <laughs> all right, cool, awesome. Well, you go definitely go check out anything that all three of these are people are doing. Um, they always they all make awesome, fun content. So go check them out. Um, also, you can find my stuff at robotsradio.net. You can check out any of the different lore casts. You come hang out with me at twitch.tv slash uh, robots radio uh, i've been streaming games in the evenings on occasion um i don't have a regular schedule like some of these guys do or or not uh, <laughs> but um I, I enjoy hanging out with you guys when you, you have the opportunity to do so we have regular shows uh monday nights are the fallout lore cast wednesday wednesday nights are the is the dungeons and dragons lore cast thursday night Elder Scrolls Lorecast and Sunday nights are the Cyberpunk Lorecast. And so you can come back in the evenings and hang out if you're interested in any of those other shows and the worlds behind those shows. So come back and visit. All right. Yeah. T's like, what's the schedule? Um, <laughs> <laughs> and that's why I was like, well, maybe you're not. Um, yeah. <laughs> But uh, yeah, everything, things work differently for different people. All right, guys. Well, thanks for joining me. Until next time, everyone stay safe out there. And I don't know, just think about what cool things you love about the lore and come tell us about it. We'll talk to you guys later. Yeah. All right, everyone. See you later. Bye. Bye everybody. Everybody. Thanks for listening to the Elder Scrolls Lorecast. All sounds and music are owned by Bethesda Softworks or Zenimax Studios, and no copyright infringement is intended. If you have something you'd like to contribute to the show, please reach out to us at elderscrollslorecast at gmail.com or on Twitter at ESO Lorecast. If you'd like to help support the show, check out the rewards you can get at patreon.com slash elderscrollslorecast. I really appreciate you listening, and I'd love to hear from you soon. Thanks to our patrons for support, especially our Tier 5 patrons, including Noodle Al Dente. You've been listening to a Robots Radio Podcast. Smart shows for interesting people. Check out all the shows at robotsradio.net.